the council have decided they want to redevelop this area and um, part of the plan is that the building is sold to possibly be free living. Uh, it might be someone else, we don't know yet. Um, and the plans that these people have got are to demolish the shop, the hall and the flats that we live in as well and the clinic on the side of the hall and redevelop it, building 40, 45, 46 flats, whatever it is they've, they've planned to do and rebuild a shop around the corner. We don't know how big it will be, possibly smaller, um, with a, a higher rent and a new community centre, half the size of what it already is. Uh, the hall is basically the size it is, suits all the people who use the hall. So if they make a hall a lot smaller, the people who are using it now will gradually disappear and then possibly we'll lose the hall completely then. I was technically homeless and rough sleeping until Andy, which is the boss in here, and his mum and dad gave me a roof to live above the shop and a job to get me on my feet. And then from there, I moved on to live with my girlfriend and have my own family. First coming here when I was still in school and asking Andy for a job then. And then um, my friend and me had a joint 18th birthday party in the community centre and been to numerous uh, events in the community centre, charity events on New Year's. I also work in there with Andy doing the bar when we, we have events in there. So I think every, all memories are good for me here because I've never had a bad one and we all just get along. It's like a family away from home and, I, and that's what I enjoy more than anything. My mum had a wedding reception here which was 18 years ago. So we, yeah, we all come here and, and done that because it was a nice, a nice area to come to, a nice community, the nice size hall. So I run the Active Heart Specialist classes, so I do low impact to circuit classes for people with medical conditions. I work at the Leisure Centre down the road and I've done a qualification and we got funding for it originally and this hall become available for us to run the sessions in. So, so if you didn't have this hall, where would you do it? I don't know. We would be struggling for a location, especially the size of this hall because there's not many of them left around here. Two pound, please. All right, thank you. Cheers, mate. Thank you. All right, come there. Come. Thank you. I've got it. I've got it. Oh, you got it, yeah? All right, okay. She's got it. Good girl. Well done. Oh, my God. Oh, la, la. Oh, yeah. Oh, la, la. Oh, la, la. We don't get any problems from the kids around here. You know, I'll get some parents coming and say, oh, my, my kids have a lot of problems. It causes problems everywhere else. And I said, well, I can only speak from you know, our point of view. We, when they come in here, they're good as gold. We just don't get any problems from them. Hi, Ivy. Hello, Patsy. Thank you for inviting me into your lovely home. You're welcome. It's very chic. How Thank long you. have you been living here? We've been here 35 years. <gasps> a long while. Oh. At the moment, we're at a standstill. Because? Standstill because of the proposed redevelopment from the local council. Mm -hmm. The business has been our lifeline. It's been Andrew's lifeline. Mm -hmm. We work as a family, in a family environment, because locals are family now. We can go from our home, into the shop, into the bar, into the hall, without okay. going outside. 
It's a unique oh, that's business. Amazing. It's, yeah. We will never ever get that again, mm. no, no matter what they do. Said it all when we had um, we had a meeting uh, called a meeting with all the people around here when we, um, when we thought we were going to you know the council would make a decision that we was going to go uh, we called a meeting in the hall and there was over 200 odd people turned up in there to and they're all backing us and they talked to councillors and yeah definitely yeah yeah I mean if, if 20 or 30 people turned up you think oh but no so over 200 people turn up that says it all I think we have the plans that we want to put into place to make it a lot better than what it is. And all they want to do is build flats and just ruin it. There's nothing else in the area. They also want to take the ball court down as well. And that's not good because the kids use that every day as it is. And if they ain't got that, then imagine what they could do. They just want to cause trouble instead because they've got nothing else to do. Like I said, there's not many halls this size around here anymore. And by taking this away, they're, they're taking stuff away from the community. Like I said, I'm passionate about my classes. So, you know, if they can't come to their classes, you know, this is going to affect their, their long-term their long life. So, yeah, I'm passionate for it to stay open, really. We've been told every council's got a target to reach of uh, properties they've got to build houses and there's a need for housing in every area. Uh, Broxbourne Council have already reached their target housing so this is excessive over the top so it's not a necessity, I understand there's a necessity in the country but we have exceeded this necessity in this, in this borough so this is a valuable asset to the community and the, the shop and the community centre and it's well used. If it wasn't well used, I could fully understand, but it's well used and people want it to stay. And they need to listen to people.